Hello, how is it going everyone? This is a review of chapter 1129 of One Piece. We have a really simple and straightforward chapter this week. Before we begin the review however, I would like it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel for future reviews. Thank you. Okay, without further ado, let's get right into the chapter. First, of course, we have the cover story. And in this week's installment, we see that Tama is being trained in the art of ninjutsu by Shinobu. It's good to see that she is continuing to work hard to achieve her dream of becoming a kunoichi, like she promised both Ace and Luffy. Now let's move on to the actual chapter. We begin the chapter with a continuation of the last page of the previous chapter, where we see the residents of the town, in quotations, begging the self-proclaimed sun god to calm down while he is chasing after the straw hats. We see that the sun god seems to be struggling to keep up his roleplay, as he almost refers to his so-called temple as his room and his so-called servants as his pets. He also refers to the residents of the town as living dolls, which also happens to be the title of this chapter. Next, we see that the Straw Hats are still running away while riding the giant cat, or as I should call him, the Great Is Cat. Chopper points out that the Sun God is more like a demon than a god. Also, Luffy is amazed by the fact that the entire town is made from the blocks he saw in the Sun God's temple in the last chapter. It seems Luffy appreciates the amount of time it must have taken for the Sun God to build this town, so he wants to keep the damage to it to a minimum. But it seems that the Great Is Cat does not care in the slightest. The mighty Sun God pleads with the Great is cat to stop rampaging and asks him why he is aiding the straw hats. The great is cat chooses not to respond or maybe he is responding but I don't speak cat so I can't tell to be honest. After that we see that of course Luffy was not paying attention in the last chapter at all and is completely clueless about where they are heading. We also see Nami throwing away the blueprints that she stole in the last chapter which shocks Usopp but it's fine because she has already memorized them which is good because those blueprints were way too big for them to be carrying them around. Nami explains to the crew that even though the town might look never ending, it's actually a lot smaller than it looks, with her also pointing out that the clouds that we see are actually just balls of cotton held up by strings. She also states that they have already crossed half the country. It seems the glorious sun god was listening in on Nami's explanation, and he implies that the blueprints don't show everything about his realm. He then pulls out a net, claiming that the place they are in is in fact a giant detention center. Sanji points out that the Honorable Sun God is apparently speaking like a samurai would. For those that might be confused by that, in Japan there's a stereotype that otakus speak like samurais, and by otakus I mean the real hardcore types, using Gozaru and Sesha and other such words. And as we will see later, the mighty Sun God is in fact just an otaku cosplaying as the Sun God. The omnipotent Sun God continues his bold claims, stating that the facility they are in is designed so that no giant would be able to escape its walls. He then uses his net to capture the straw hats along with the great Iscat. The residents are surprised to see that there are people riding on the great Iscat. Meanwhile, Zoro and Sanji destroy the net, allowing the great Iscat to escape. The omniscient sun god is surprised by the fact that they were able to break the metal wires for some reason. We found out later that he apparently looks down on humans, but come on now. The all-conquering sun god then states that this resistance is futile because the straw hats are about to enter the domain of the mighty year god. But as we know, the mighty year god is already in Luffy's stomach. The residents inform the majestic sun god of that fact as well. Although they only know that the body was burned, they don't know that it was cooked and eaten. The amazing sun god is surprised that the straw hats were able to take down the mighty year god. He then goes on a long rant about how great the world he created is since the characters in it as he calls them are taking actions even he didn't foresee. Meanwhile, the residents decide to use this chaos to try and escape from this prison. Also during his rant, the sun god states that while Hajruddin may have acknowledged Luffy, he doesn't. We'll get more about that later in the chapter. While the glorious, wait did I already say that, whatever. While the crazy sun god continues his rant, Usopp uses his skull bomb glass to shatter the mirror on the other side, only to find that there is a wall behind it. He notes that the wall is really strong. Luffy tells him to leave the wall to him. The mentally ill sun god continues his delusional rant. During this rant, he also name drops the straw hats, adding the suffix Taso to their names, because once again, he's an otaku. 
The next scene is really interesting because for the first time we see Luffy using a gear fourth technique by transforming only a part of his body instead of having to completely transform. We have already seen him progress like this with gear two before because if you remember pre time skip Luffy could only use gear two on his whole body whereas after the time skip he was able to use it on a single part of his body. It seems now he can also do that with gear fourth. Honestly, this makes a lot of sense, since with Gear 5th now being a thing, there were not many occasions for him to fully transform into Gear 4th. Although this probably does mean that we won't see the full Gear 4th transformation again in the manga, barring special circumstances. Which is a bit of a shame really, because I actually really like that transformation, but what can we do? Moving on, we see that Nami is, is pissed off at the creepy sun god for everything he has put them through. And Sanji is also mad because the perverted sun god got to dress up Nami. Nami tells him to get a grip because the criminal sun god is going to receive some divine retribution. Before that can happen though, we get a flashback of how the straw hats ended up here in the first place. Where we also find out that the lunatic sun god is apparently Rodo, one of the members of the new giant warrior pirates that we have seen in the cover page before. His birth was actually also mentioned during Big Mom's flashback, along with Goldberg, who is also a member of the new Giant Warrior Pirates. So anyway, we see that the Straw Hats ended up here because Mugin, which is the giant raven from the last chapter, happened to pick up the Sunny and brought it to Rodo while everyone was sleeping because they happened to pass through something called the Sleeping Mist Belt. Rodo was initially surprised to see them, but then he realizes that this is a good opportunity to prove that Hajudin was wrong for choosing to serve some puny humans. We also get a confirmation that he is in fact a pervert and he also used some sort of sleeping gas to keep the straw hats knocked out for a longer time so that he could change their clothing and place them inside his little playground. The pervert Rodo wants to make the straw hats serve him instead but before long he receives the divine retribution that Nami had promised him earlier in the form of a thunderbolt from Zeus. The residents are of course shocked by this development. After the divine retribution, Luffy bids farewell to the block country and uses his Kong gun to break through the wall. We also get some parting words from the other straw hats, with Usopp and Chopper praying that Elbaf is on the other side of the wall. Sanji bids farewell to his fellow pervert and Zoro is just happy to finally get out of here. After Luffy breaks the wall, Usopp and Chopper proclaim that they are free. But are they really though? I guess we'll find out in the next chapter. All in all, this was a good chapter of One Piece. We found out the true identity of the Sun God. We also finally found out the reason for the Straw Hat and the giant warrior pirates suddenly falling asleep. Apparently, it had absolutely nothing to do with the alcohol after all. Personally for me though, the best parts of this chapter were Nami's lightning bolt and finding out that Luffy can now use gear forth techniques without having to fully transform, which is huge. So while this chapter might not be as good as the previous few chapters, I think this is still a really good chapter of One Piece. And I am looking forward to what other adventures await the Straw Hats in the Land of Giants. So with that being said, make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Bye bye.